what customers are going to expect from future HMI SCADA software is that it'll it'll be something that provides them more without having to have as much energy to go in. And so we've constantly been working on reducing the amount of energy that it requires to put systems together. Or I think ultimately in the future with the explosion in numbers of, numbers of devices, they're gonna be an expectation that they're gonna be able to do these things in real time. So in real time, I'm gonna be able to go in there and expand my system without having to go back and re-engineer solutions. <laughs> these solutions should automatically generate themselves so that I come back and I can add the pieces and parts that I need without having to re-engage engineers to come back and correct my systems in real time. And so then it's going to have to not only address scope, but also not just scope in just terms of the equipment that it's looking at, but also be able on the type of information. So we're going to have to not only work at it from the device side, but also from the information that I'm going to want to put into context. Um, those things are going to become standard requirements out of HMI and SCADA packages going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Now, lower cost of ownership, uh, I think that is what the customer is expecting out from the uh, SCADA software. In the past, we have seen customer, they, they, they can afford to to, to, to spend maybe like six months to implement a HMI system. Nowadays, the customers is coming back and say, oh, I need the system to be up in one month, two months. So how do we engineer the system within such a short time? So the lower cost of engineering, uh, 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 engineering efficiency, these are the things that the customer is expected. So from the uh, life cycle point of view, they, they, they are looking to a lower cost of a maintenance on the system. So if they want to add in the functionality, how the system allow them to extend on the system to add in more functionality without changing a lot of the fundamentals that are already put in into the system, right? So these are the things that the customer is expecting. For someone entering the industry, I think the advice is that they they better work for the right company. <laughs> so I would say that, uh, you know, the, the another aspect is that the uh, uh, learning the technologies, learning the, uh, the, the, the right way of uh, engineering the system, learning the, uh, the fundamentals in how the efficiency, how do we build up the efficiencies of the uh, system from uh, using the right platforms. I think that would be the, the key part. Yeah, I think a key point is keep it fresh, right? So I think technology is evolving at a faster pace than ever and do not stop. I think we'll continue faster and faster. So uh, in the past, you could become an expert in this kind of systems and reuse the same concepts for many years in a, in a row. And now if you don't keep updating yourself, learning new technologies, learning new ways of doing things, thinking out of the box, in a couple of years you are updated already, right? And unable to compete with other companies, other people that continue evolving and learning new ways of doing things more efficiently. So I think more than ever, you need to recycle yourself continuously. And another important point is when you make a decision about a solution, a design, a product, a brand, think in long term, not only in short term. So make decisions based on what not only resolves your problem today, but also provides a, a lower TCO or a higher uh, return on investment in the long term. Tools that gives you the openness and extensibility to keep evolving over time. Yeah, the, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to allude to. Uh, in other words, is you know, uh, evaluate how all these tools in the market is going to help you to improve on your operational efficiencies. So uh, definitely, I think the for someone that uh, uh, that trying to impact on the change in the company, you you ought to basically choose the right platform, choose the right technology to start off with. But uh, the fundamental is you need to you need to have a business driver in terms of what is your what is your business goal what is your business objective that you are trying to achieve I think another piece of advice that I give for people entering into this space is that for many years, uh, industrial automation, particularly process visualization, uh, has sort of dumbed down the job. I don't mean that in any disrespect, but I think it's also been considered an entry level position, but it's more returning to an area of being a profession. And now, and people are becoming experts in having to understand how to provide the best situational awareness for their customers and to be able to address these types of things and not just how do I animate a number and throw it on the screen and hope someone makes use of it. So definitely embrace it as a profession. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there is a lot more to, to creating visual components than just 
putting PNID diagrams on the screen. So there's definitely, uh, I mean, out of our, uh, out of, uh, when you get into this industry, it's, um, and you look more at UI and UX and how that influences operational effectiveness, that makes also your field a lot more interesting because you're not just that $40 guy that has to put together the screen really fast. No, you have to think about like, when an operator interacts with it, what would be the most efficient way of getting to my end goal, or his end goal. So, so in whatever you do, always try to envision of how, when a user interacts with the system, is that the most effective way to get so, to, to accomplish what you want to do? And, and I think you will find uh, in a lot, of, uh, a lot of times, the answer to be very different than what the, than what the standard prescription would be. Right? So, and that can come forward. I would also advise people to talk to the end users that use the systems because we as engineers always like to think like, we know how to do this, right? So it would be good to go um, to operators and interview them before you implement something and say like, you know, how would you expect this to be presented to you? Um, so that's a good start for any, good advice for anybody that would start within the industry is uh, look out of an operational perspective what you're trying to achieve.